It's the holy grail of music production, capturing an idea in your head before it's gone. And between that elusive idea and your final song stands a multitude of things that can scuttle your efforts. For many of us, we can sense the chords we want to play, and we can even hear the melody we want to write in our heads. But try and work out how to play those chords, and all the bum notes on the keyboard can end our creative process quicker than a wrong move in Minesweeper. So today, we're going to look at one of Reason's players, Scales and Chords, to see how we can realize and even improve our musical vision. Players like Scales and Chords are a class of device for the Reason Rack that are primarily concerned with transforming incoming notes and performances. Players neither root audio nor will they wire into your control voltage monstrosities. They come earlier in the signal chain, where your hands meet the keyboard or your MIDI notes meet the sequencer. Let's start very basically by dragging in a handy dandy ID8 grand piano. To apply our Scales and Chords player to our instrument, we simply drag it into our rack above the ID8. Right away you can hear that Scales and Chords has the chords part of its namesake going on in full effect. The interface is pretty simple. In the first section we can see that our key is currently set to C major. We can change the root note of the key and the tonality of the scale. Today, let's work in C minor. After choosing the key, the next important decision you'll want to make with scales and chords is whether it's operating in scales mode, or you guessed it, chords mode. With the chord switch turned off, scales and chords has a simple function, to alter or filter your incoming notes so you can never play a wrong note outside the key of your song. For example, the key of C minor begins with C, D, and E flat. But with our scales and chords player in place, if I play D flat, D and E on my keyboard, we hear the same pitches. The D flat I'm playing has been corrected back down to C, and the E has been corrected back to E flat. If I prefer, I can turn on filter notes to change the player's behavior to disable wrong notes instead of correcting them. Now when I try and play D flat and E, I get nothing whatsoever. Scales and Chords even lets me know it's blocking a wrong note from getting through to my instrument. With the chord switch activated, our player isn't just correcting wrong notes, it's generating extra notes to turn our single keyboard input into full chords. By default, we can see that these chords are triads, which means there's three notes in the chord. The music theory needed to know when to play major chords or minor chords happens automatically for you. If we want to play fewer notes, we can change the notes knob to 2 for a simple parallel thirds harmony. On the other hand, if we want to get more complex sounding chords, we can increase to 4 notes to get jazzy sounding 7th chords. Let's go back to 3 notes and take a look at the next knob, Inversion. Inversion is just a fancy way of saying the order of the notes in our chord. The same three notes of our triad can be played in a different order on the piano, and each inversion has a slightly different sonic quality to it. Activating the Open Chords option widens the distance between the notes of our chord. If we want to fill out our chord in other ways, we can add a note and octave above our basic triad. We can add a note and octave below our triad. And we can also have the option of adding color to our chord. Color adds density to our chord by adding an additional note outside of the traditional triad to our chord. In this case, adding a ninth, which gives our chord a certain tension. The Alter button, when depressed, alters the chord temporarily often taking a minor chord and making it major, or vice versa. This can be used for musical effect, and I encourage you to experiment with it to see if it suits the song you're working on. Now that you've got a sense of scales and chords controls, let's make some music with it. Scales and chords has been revolutionary for me in my own music making. Perhaps the biggest way that's been true for me is when I write chord progressions. Let's stay in C minor and I'll just explore chord progressions the way I normally explore melodies on the keyboard.
Even if I'm playing a key outside of the scale, Scales and Chords corrects me instantly. That's sounding nice, but it's not really an Adele kind of day. So let's get off the piano and onto something more epic. That's okay, but let's think bigger. That's more like it. Now to make this sound even fuller, we'll add the octave down, add the octave up, and spread the notes out more with open chords activated. Yeah, let's record those same notes we were exploring on the piano sound, but now in our epic stab patch. One of the most fun things to do with the new sounds in Reason 9 is to stack combinator patches. To do that, let's right-click the sequencer track and choose Duplicate Tracks and Devices. Then we'll add some attack to our sound with a patch from the Plucks and Mallets folder. Clipped Stab, which on its own sounds like this. But if we play them together and pan them for a wider stereo sound, we get this. Nice. Let's add one more layer by duplicating our track again and bringing in a patch from the bass folder. Let's try a square wave style bass to give us some round warmth. So we search in the synth bass folder for square. Let's try hipster square and see how that sounds on its own. That's quite nice actually. It's exactly the kind of sound we want. And together with our other sounds, we now have something quite epic. It's begging for drums and bass, but since this is a scales and chords tutorial, we'll just press the fast forward button and... There we go. Here's our chords with a punchy basic drum beat and a bass line that follows the same root notes. To break up the staccato nature of our chords, let's add another track. I want something with lots of rhythmic energy, so I'm going into the arpeggios folder of the Reason 9 sounds, and I'll drag in friendly sprites to my rack. If we look inside this combinator, we can see that friendly sprites uses the classic RPG-8 arpeggiator to make rhythmic repetitions out of any sustained notes we play. Play just one note, and we get a repeating pulse two notes and it's musical ping pong. But play three notes and suddenly we start hearing the classic electronic music textures which arpeggiators are known for. So if a simple three note arpeggiated chord is the sound we're after, then I bet you're already thinking of a device that'll help us generate those chords, right? Let's drag scales and chords above our friendly sprites combinator and set our key to C minor to match our song so far. For this texture, we don't actually want big, wide, open chords or jazzy coloration, so the default chord settings are perfect. And we also don't necessarily want this sound to do the exact same thing as the other chord progression. The beauty of scales and chords is that we can explore other harmony lines freely while staying safely in key, like this. The same creative potential exists for melodies as well. Let's add in a really cool lead sound that's called Distended Bend Lead. It's a fuzz lead sound bathed in reverb. Though, let's dial that reverb back a bit. Let's drag a scales and chords player above the lead sound, set the scale to C minor, but this time we'll turn off the chord switch so that we're doing simple single note correction. And now I'll work out a melody line. I'm just exploring different lines and phrases that sound nice to me. You can see I'm only playing the white keys on the keyboard, which I know includes keys outside the C minor scale. But instead of worrying about that, I'm focused 100% on making my song sound how I hear it in my head.
Scales and chords is a useful tool whether you're new to music theory or have some experience. There's a creative advantage to capturing that fleeting moment of inspiration before it gets away. But don't just take my word for it. As a composer, arranger, and musician, I use theory and harmony on a daily basis. It's so cool to pick a scale that I might not always know all the voicings in and be able to hear what all those chords will sound like and then dial in what I need from those chords. Anything that helps me get the job done quicker, I'm a huge fan of. Let's bring in some vocals on our idea. What we've got now is a really nice sounding, harmonically rich piece of music that, I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't have written on my own in quite this way, and certainly not this quickly. So when it comes to scales and chords, just like Taylor Swift says, this player's gonna play, 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 play. <laughs> 